I tell people, supposing you went to sleep and you had a dream, and in your dream you had, um, oh, all these different characters, and, and you had all of this money, and you had everything that you wanted in your dream. And then you woke up, and then you look back at your dream, and you became attached to the stuff that you had in your dream. And you said, wait a minute, I want that. There was gold in there. There was silver. There was all of these friends. I had a Ferrari there. I mean, all of this. I got to have that. Somebody would come away and cart you off and put you in a rubber room and say, that was a dream. You can't be attached to that. That's just a thought that you have. That's the way you got to view life. Instead of it being an eight-hour dream, it's an 80-year dream or a 90-year dream. And at the end of the dream, you don't want to be looking back at all of the stuff that you wish you could still have because you can't have it. <laughs> you don't get any of that. So you try to detach yourself now while you're here, while you're alive, from the need to have that stuff. Instead, you just let it sort of all flow. As absurd as it would be for you to be attached to the stuff that you had in your dream, it's that absurd for you to be attached to the stuff that you're having in this dream. <laughs> you have to die while you're alive. Now, that's a very hard concept for people to get. But you have to experience your own death while you're alive. Let me tell you a story. It's a wonderful story. It's an old, ancient story. I'll paraphrase it. There was a, a hunter who lived in India. And he would go to Africa every two years. And he would bring back animals and prizes and things like that. Well, one year he took off and he went to the jungle... And he discovered this large enclave inside the jungle. And it was filled with beautiful parrots, beautiful birds, multicolored, and they all talked. And he couldn't get over it. And he put a net out over one of the trees, and he captured one of the parrots. And he put the parrot in a cage. And he brought the parrot back to be with him in India as his pet. And he fed the parrot sunflower seeds, and he fed him rice, and he took wonderful care of him. He was very good. Kept him in the cage. Two years went by, and he talked to the parrot every day. And he said to the parrot, I'm now going back to Africa. Is there anything you would like me to say to your friends back there in the jungle when I'm back there? The parrot said, yes. Tell them that I'm very happy in my cage. Tell them that I'm joyful and that I love being in my cage here with you. Just tell them that. The hunter went back to Africa. He went back to the place in the jungle where he had been two years before. And he told the story. He said, your friend that I took back has a message for you. And the message is that he is happy in his cage, that he is joyful with me, and that he has no regrets. At the instant of hearing that, a bird on one of the branches keeled over and dropped dead. Dropped dead. <sniffs> Stiff. The hunter assumed that he was just filled with sorrow at hearing of what had happened to his uh, friend. So he went back to India, and he told his parrot what had happened. He said, I went back and I did just as you said. And I told them all out there. And at the moment that I told it, apparently one of the parrots was so upset that he'd missed you so much that he just dropped dead. And at the instant that that happened, the parrot in the cage keeled over dead. His legs went straight up in the air and he went stiff. The hunter was beside himself. He, he couldn't figure out how could this happen. And he took the dead parrot out of the cage, opened it up, and threw it out on the woodpile. The instant that the parrot landed on the woodpile, he flew up to the branch. And the hunter said, you tricked me. What is this? I thought you were dead. And the parrot said, my friend was sending me a message. He told me, by his actions, that in order for you to escape from your cage, you must die while you're alive. Okay, now that's an old story. That's an ancient story that's been told over the years. What does it mean? <laughs> I mean, don't you see that this is a cage? 
that the whole planet is a cage, if you can just stand back far enough and see that we're still restricted by the limitations placed on us as human beings. We're stuck here or maybe in our homes or in wherever we are. We're all in cages. And even though we have more room to manipulate, we may even have a whole planet, we're still sort of in cages. Now, how do you escape from the cage that you're in? You have to die while you're alive. You have to literally experience your own death. All of us have to. All of us are going to die. So why not experience it in advance and see yourself out of your body, gone, but able to look back at what's going on now, just like the dream where you have the dream and you have everything you want, but you're able to look back at it. As you do that, you begin to see the folly, the absurdity of hanging on to anything, of being attached to anything, of needing anything, of telling yourself that I can't be happy if, from the perspective of having died, but being able to look back on it just like the dream. As soon as you can do that, as soon as you can experience yourself formless, dimensionless, form and all of the attendant things that you hang on to become irrelevant. They're not necessary any longer. You have a whole new way of living, a new way of being.